Welcome to Electro Online. Now we're going to see an example of what we saw in the previous video, why we would use the Taylor series rather than the Maclaurin series. So now our function f of x is going to be the square root of x. Here we have the general format of the Taylor series. If we graph out the function f of x equals the square root of x, then we get this familiar curve. We can see when x equals 1, the square root is 1. When x equals 4, the square root is 2, and so forth. Now we're going to evaluate this function with a Taylor polynomial of degree 2 with a equals 4. Now what does that really mean? First of all, the degree 2 means that we're only going to take the first and second derivative terms, meaning this term and this term, in addition to the f of a term. So we'll take the first f of a term, the constant here, and then we take the first two terms that have the first and second derivative. If we take a degree 3 set of polynomials, or the polynomial of degree 3, then we would take the f cube, or not f cube per se, but the third derivative of f. And the fourth degree would be the fourth derivative of f term as well. So we grab additional terms depending upon how many terms we think we're going to need. Now that depends, of course, how close the value that we're trying to evaluate the function at is equal to the number of a. Let me explain a equals 4 means that we're going to evaluate this function for value of x very close to the number 4. If we don't, we're going to need a lot of terms. If we do, we need very few terms. Now, show, we'll show you why that works. So here we have the Taylor series, or Taylor polynomial series, to degree 2. So we write t sub 2, so we have the first term, f prime term, and f double prime term. Now, the Taylor series to degree 2 can now be written in terms of a being equal to 4. So we replace every a by 4, so we get f of 4, f prime of 4, f double prime of 4. And you can see then that when we plug that in, because we can actually evaluate those terms, here we have f of x is equal to x to the 1 half, f prime of x, f double prime, f triple prime, meaning the second and third derivative. And then we evaluate these at a equals 4 or x equals 4, you can see then that we have these various values for the coefficients. If we now plug those in here, you can see that f evaluated at x equals 4 gives us 2, f prime evaluated 4 gives us 1 fourth, and f double prime evaluated 4 gives us minus 1 over 32. But I think I forgot one more thing. We have over 1 factorial, over 2 factorial, so this has to be over 2 factorial right there. And you can see then, when we evaluate the function at various values of x, let's see what happens. First of all, we're going to try x equals 0. Now, you wouldn't typically want to do that because you chose a equals 4, and x equals 0 is quite a bit away from the value a equals 4, so you're not going to converge to the correct value very quickly. And that's what I'm trying to illustrate here. So when let x equals 0, we plug in 0 for x here, and we plug in 0 for x here, we end up with 2 minus 1 over, what, minus 1 over 4 times minus 4, since x is 0, and minus 1 over 64, that's 32 times 2, uh, times minus 4 to the second power, again, since x is equal to 0. Now, of course, we know what the square root of 0 is. It's equal to 0, but this Taylor series expansion to the first three terms gives us 0 0.75, which isn't even close. We then realize in order to get close to the value that we're trying to get, we would have to add many more terms. And there's again an illustration that the Taylor series allows you to get very close values of the evaluation of the function very quickly if you let a be very close to the value you want to evaluate the function at. But we picked a equals 4 and we're trying to evaluate at x equals 0. That's why it doesn't converge very quickly. Now let's see where it converges very quickly. Let's evaluate the function at x equals 4, where 4 is the exact same value we got for a. Now we know we're going to converge very quickly. We immediately know it's equal to 2, because if we let x equals 4, notice 4 minus 4 is 0, 4 minus 4 is 0, all of the terms go to 0. We just picked the first term, which is the exact value of that function. Of course, we didn't need to do it that way, but it's a good illustration. Now let's try the value x equals 3. Now we're not very far away from a equals 4, only one unit, so we should converge rather quickly. Let's see if that is true. 
So we're going to take our function right here, and instead of x, we're going to place 3 and see what we get. So that becomes 2 plus 1 quarter times 3 minus 4 to the first power minus 1 over 30, 32 times 2, which is minus 1 over 64, times 3 minus 4 to the second power. Now what you see here is we have, this is equal to 2, this is minus 1 raised to the first power, so minus 1 times a quarter, that's 2 minus a quarter, and here we have minus 1 to the second power, that's positive 1, but we still have a negative here, so that's minus 1 over 64. So let's go ahead with the calculator, figure out what that's equal to. So we have 1.75 minus 1 divided by 64, and this converges to 1.734375 after only using three terms, the first term and then the f prime and f double prime term. What should the actual value be? Well, let's take the square root of 3 and see what we get. After all, that's what the function is. So take 3, square root, and the actual value that I should have gotten is equal to 1.732051. And you can see that for the first two decimal places, we're already right on the nose and not that far off in the third decimal place. So you can see that even when the number is one different from the value that we picked, we get, we converge rather quickly to a correct value of that function. And if I had picked up, picked say x equals 3.9, after three turns we'd almost be exactly at the correct value for the function. So bottom line, why do we use a Taylor series? To evaluate a function very close to the value we give to the number a in our Taylor series expansion. And that's how it works.